This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic. We're going to use the identity for the sine of the sum of two angles to derive the identity for the sine of 2x. So what that means is we're going to first write what the formula is the identity for the sine of the sum of two angles. So let's start with that. That would be the sine of a times the cosine of b plus the cosine of a times the sine of b. So that was the identity, which you should already know for the sine of a plus b. So the question is, how are we going to derive the identity for the sine of 2x? So we're trying to figure out how to use that identity to figure out what the sine of 2x equals. And that means we need to write 2x as a sum so that we could use this identity. So we could do that. 2x, how could you write that as a sum? You could write that as x plus x. So in other words, if we're going to use the identity above, we're replacing a with x and we're also replacing b with x. All right, so let's do that. It says it's the sine of the first thing in the parentheses, which is x, times the cosine of the second thing, which is also x. And then we're going to plus the cosine of the first thing, which is x, and the sine of the second, which is also x. And you have to recognize these are like terms. And if you want to see it that way, you can rewrite it. So what I'm using is the commutative property over here on the right. And furthermore, if you want, you can note the coefficients are 1, right? And so if I were going to add like terms, that would give you 2 sine x, cosine x, and that's exactly what we wanted to do. We wanted to derive the identity for the sine of 2x. And so now we've got it. How about using the identity for the cosine of the sum of two angles to derive the identity for the cosine of 2x. All right, so let's start out the same way. If we're going to use the identity for the cosine of the sum, let's write down what that is. So it's the cosine of a, cosine of b, minus the sine of a, times the sine of b. Okay, so these were derived in previous videos. So the question is, how can we derive the identity for the cosine of 2x? So again, cosine of 2x needs to be written, in order to use this identity, as the cosine of the sum of two angles. So it makes sense to write cosine of 2x as cosine of x plus x. Now we could use this identity we see above. So we, we're replacing both a and b with x, right? So that'll give us cosine x. Cosine x again, right? Because both a and b are x in this case. Um, minus the sine of x, sine of x. So cosine of x times cosine of x, that is cosine squared x. Sine of x times sine of x is sine squared of x. And we have just derived the identity for the cosine of the sum of two angles. Now, that's one of the identities, right? There are three identities for cosine of 2x. So let's go on to the next part of the problem. Begin by writing one of the identities for cosine of 2x and then use the Pythagorean identities to derive at least one of the other identities. All right, so the one we just did, we used, we, excuse me, we found out that cosine of 2x could be written as cosine squared x minus sine squared x. So let's begin with that identity, cosine squared of x minus sine squared x. You don't have to start with that one, but that's what I'm going to do. So we start with that, right? That is one of the identities. And 
we want to use a Pythagorean identity to derive at least one of the other ones. Okay, so remember the Pythagorean identities. That was sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. And so you can solve for sine squared x or you could solve for cosine squared x, right? Sine squared x can be written as 1 minus cosine squared x and cosine squared x can be written as 1 minus sine squared x. So we basically want to use one of these identities. That means I want to replace either the cosine squared x or the sine squared x with something. Let's go ahead and replace cosine squared x with 1 minus sine squared x. So I'm replacing the cosine squared x with 1 minus sine squared x. Then I have this other minus sine squared x, right? These are like terms. So I have just derived this identity, which is one of the other identities for the cosine of 2x. So in other words, I've just shown that the cosine of 2x could be written as cosine squared x minus sine squared x from the previous page. And now I've shown that it can also be written as 1 minus 2 sine squared x. How about another one of the identities? How about I just stick with where I am right now? How about I replace sine squared x with 1 minus cosine squared x? So that's how I can get another one. So I could take sine squared x and rewrite it as 1 minus cosine squared x. If you only had to do one of them, you'd be done once you're here, right? You did it. Okay, so if you want to do another identity, now just distribute your minus sign, minus 2 plus 2 cosine squared x. And let's see. I'm just going to write the 2 cosine squared x first. 2 cosine squared x. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. And there we have another identity. Now, you could have replaced way up here the 1 minus cosine squared x into this formula. Or maybe you started with this formula, 2 cosine squared x minus 1, and replace cosine squared x in there and got another formula. So in other words, it depends what you start with. I started with cosine squared x minus sine squared x. Okay? So if you start with one identity, you should be able to use Pythagorean um, identity to derive one of the other ones. This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic.